According to the CDC, an average 659,000 people die in the United States each year from heart disease. Hi, I'm Dr. Jim Januzzi, cardiologist and director of the Dennis and Marilyn Barry Research Fellowship in Cardiology at the Mass General Hospital. And this is Clues to Cures, History of a Cure for Heart Failure. Cardiovascular disease includes risk factors such as hypertension, diabetes, and high cholesterol, which may result in other forms of heart disease such as coronary artery disease and valvular heart disease, which, as they run through their course, ultimately result in heart failure. Heart failure, strictly defined, is the inability of the heart to maintain normal cardiac output. However, heart failure may manifest in numerous ways, including signs of fatigue, inadequate perfusion to end organs, such as the kidneys, for example, as well as perhaps the most prominent sign or symptom, that being shortness of breath from congestion. This may be very subtle at first, and in fact, our patients may not notice it at first until it progresses over a period of months to years. At that point, heart failure may be quite established and may be complicated by other issues, including irregular heart rhythms, the need for hospitalization, as well as possibly progression to death. And in fact, when a person is hospitalized for heart failure, their prognosis immediately worsens. This identifies the urgency to recognize the diagnosis of heart failure at an earlier stage. Although it sounds completely crazy, thousands of years ago, the ancient Greeks talked about circulating substances in the bloodstream that may be associated with the presence of different forms of disease. Called humors, which include things like black bile or green bile, the Greeks hypothesized that imbalances in humors may be associated with various problems, including heart disease. Not so crazy, actually. It turns out that we can now measure substances in the bloodstream called biomarkers, which reflect exactly what the ancient Greeks were talking about. Traditionally, heart failure has been considered to be a clinical diagnosis. In other words, it is defined by history and physical examination. So it starts with us talking to our patients and examining them. But frequently, we require other types of adjunctive testing, such as imaging, including an echocardiogram, an ultrasound of the heart muscle, in order to better understand the presence and severity of heart failure. Given the rapid rise in the incidence and prevalence of heart failure, early recognition of the diagnosis has become a major priority in our space. And this is where measurement of circulating substances in the bloodstream, biomarkers, has taken on an especially important role. Our colleagues at the Mass General Heart Center have pioneered the field of heart failure biomarkers. These are really nothing more than a blood test, but they can tell us so much about the presence and severity of heart failure. For example, in a person with shortness of breath, we can measure these biomarkers, which may tell us that a person has heart failure and they didn't even know it. In someone with established heart failure, levels of these blood tests may tell us whether a person is doing well or doing poorly, and it may give us an opportunity to adjust their heart failure therapies in order to improve their prognosis. So what might the future hold? With nearly 700,000 cardiovascular deaths a year in the United States of America, the goal would be prevention. As someone who sees patients suffering from heart failure in the Mass General Heart Center every single day, if we are able to identify heart failure at its earliest stages so that we might be able to intervene and prevent its development, that would be a goal. Be sure to like and subscribe for more Mass General Brigham health content.